By divine providence or deliberate orchestration, Nigeria's 60th anniversary celebration has been characterized by protestation anchored on police brutality. Tensions are still very high. Hello and welcome to our program, Violence Free War. My name is Kali Ikpe. Well, we got a special report, a very light one, but indicative of the mood of the nation today. After what, we'll be coming back with our special guest in the house. I'll see you on the flip side. Police brutality is not something peculiar to just the Nigerian police as the Navy, the Air Force, the Army and all other uniform units are complicit. This is an opportunity for the leadership of the country to show solidarity with the people. The National Assembly, for example, can make very, very sweeping concessions by cutting their salaries and allowances drastically, probably possibly by even 50%, and they should learn also to give priority to education. A brand new era may just be beckoning. And SARS, and SWAT, and police brutality is essentially an injustice. Everybody run, run, run. Yeah. Everybody scatter, scatter. Yeah. Some people lost some bread. Yeah. Someone nearly died. Yeah. Someone just died. Yeah. Police, they come, hammy, they come. Yeah. Confusion everywhere. Yeah. Uh, seven minutes later. All don't cool down, brother. Police don't go away. Hammy don't disappear. Them leaves sorrow, tears, and blood. Them regular faith. We're talking violence. All right, welcome back. Our special guest in the house is an industrialist, a media executive, the CEO of Next TV. Welcome, Malik Ado Ibrahim. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, Kelly. Nice so we should shake hands. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, Malik, maybe we should not even be laughing. It's a very serious matter. Yes. Our nation is at a standstill, more or less, like NSAS, police brutality. That's been what's been on the lips of many, uh, of, on the hearts of many, too. It's a worldwide issue now. It's an international issue right yes. now. What does this portend for our nation? Well, first, our heart goes out to those who have lost their lives and, and um, you know, been brave enough to come out to protest against what is really 
a global phenomenon. It's not just Nigerian. Um, uh, unfortunately, there's a mood for people to rise. Um, and um, we know, unfortunately, we're seeing it in the 60th anniversary of Nigeria, as you've said. Um, the NSARS issue is really been you know, a, a situation for the last four or five years. They've said they're going to end this um, police um, unit. And unfortunately, that hasn't been done. And the people are fed up. Um, social media has made that uh, a very strong point. And I think we're beginning to see the beginning of a, a, a Nigerian spirit, a, a rising of our voice, and the ability for us to talk to government through these sorts of unfortunate uh, needs. So that's what I'm seeing right now. Now, you see, the protestation has turned protracted. Yet, there doesn't seem to be a connect between the organizers of this protest and um, government. The organizers seem like they're faceless. Where does this lead us? This should be an end game. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be now presently, and it looks like it's falling apart. I don't know. Yes, it seems as if it's been hijacked for some reason. Um, but you know, from my own point of view, uh, as a Nigerian, um, I'm not looking at this as an isolated um, situation. Um, unfortunately, we've had violence in this country for many years, and this has really started from this whole Boko Haram issue and insecurity in the North. The insecurity in the North has led us to some unfortunate situations where even local governments in the Northeast are not in their local government areas, they're in um, cities like Maiduguri because of the fear, this insecurity in the country. Um, the South didn't seem to take this as a part of the nation, it was too far away. We've seen that divide and it's palpable. This NSARS has now caused a Southern violent um, eruption and Unfortunately, it's sitting in the South and seeming to be in the South. We are one country and we need to figure out what do we want to be. And where I'm having a difficulty in this is that we're not having um, a voice that has been heard by a singular, um, uh, I don't say administrative unit, because who's speaking to government? Who's telling truth to government? At this point in time, it's not being said. We're not talking about insecurity in the North. We're not talking about the NSARS movement. We're talking about police brutality. We're not talking about bad governance. We're having small fires that are not, that can be extinguished rather than everybody coming together as Nigerians and taking this message to government. And this is where I, I think that we need to uh, sort of keep this thing simmering, but have a very um, uh, concise uh, and deliberate it's a formation of ideas that, is, that are going to go to government and, and put our grievances forward, right? Because right now, it seems to be a little bit disjointed. The North has its grievances, the South has its grievances, the East has it, the Niger Delta region has it. Uh, we need to have a national conversation about what Nigeria is supposed to be. Malik, I think that's a reflection, and that's even reflected in the way the protesters are putting forward their demand. Originally, there's a five-point demand from the protesters. Yes. I don't know how the way, uh, they managed to get that together. But it seems like they have all agreed on that. Five points demand that have been presented to the government. The IG, uh, the federal government, which just said, okay, we're cool with this, we're going to put this in place. Yet, the protests have continued. Now, there's no particular person that you're going to even dialogue with. So, we're going to even get... Where's the synergy amongst us, which is what you're talking about yes. on a larger scale? Yes. That even amongst the protesters themselves, it seems like this has been orchestrated to remain protracted, and remain limitless, open-ended. Yes. And where does it take us? Well, if you look at a strategy, if I was government, I would say let the flame burn itself out because no, there isn't... No, you, you, you have said yes to the demand. Yes. So is that not enough to, to get on the street? Well, some missteps were made. And the first misstep was the president and the commander in chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria said there's going to be an end to SARS. The misstep was the unfortunate pronouncement by the IG saying, oh, well, we're, we're reforming that unit and calling it SWAT team. And special weapons and tactical team also brings together a, a connotation of some other violence. But the fact that you actually said the name was being changed made people believe uh, this thing isn't ending. But it was too quick. It, well, the fact that you're saying you're renaming it was the misstep. And that made people say, well, nothing's changed. I'm not sure I had renaming. 
Okay. Yes, they, they, they said... So it disbanded and a new... It started update. as we're renaming it, then it went to disbanded, then it was... Anybody that was in SARS was going to get some kind of psychological um, uh, uh, analysis and decided where they were going to be. It was, they were but, just... But, but remember, they were forbidden from being part of the new... Uh, those, were, new those were consequent statements made after people started saying, uh uh we've had this before. How many times has SARS been disbanded? I think this is the fourth time. People have a memory. There's social media. Things don't get lost on the internet. We, you know, we're not an old country anymore. Nigeria is a young nation full of very, very smart individuals on every side. What we cannot do is pull the wool over people's eyes. And government must be realized that we are going to put their feet to fire. If you say it's red, it better be red because you've pronounced that to the people. There's an expectation and you must trust government. And if government's not giving you the answer and if the tools of government are not working to you, what method do we have of communicating to government other than to take to the streets? We're a democracy. And in a democracy, we must do things in a democratic fashion. And protesting is one of them. But unfortunately, that has been hijacked. And we're in a country now where we don't know what tomorrow looks like. You know, what seemed like a fantastic idea is now becoming a little bit of an inconvenience and people have lost their lives. They might, that loss of life must mean something. But people have lost their lives in the north. People have lost their, their lives in the east. This is, we need to have a conversation. And, and I think the violence is symptomatic of what's happening. We look at Black Lives Matter. Um, this took off in the States. It was hugely violent. There were protests. Um, then the police cars were being burned, um, shootings were happening, they brought the National Guard into the streets, and then it's died down. This leads me to just how this has played out, or this has played out. But we're going to continue, we're going to continue with our conversation when we return from this break. This is Violence Free Ward. I'll be right back after this timeout. Welcome back. This is Violence Free World, and in the house today is Malik Ado Ibrahim, CEO of Next TV. Now, Malik, just before we went on break, we're going to look into how all of this has played out. And um, personally, I don't think I'm too impressed. Impressed in one way, as in our people being able to stand up to the government and say, this is what we want, and then it persisted. And again, the demands have been made. Were these demands actually the right demands that should have been made in the first place? Were pressing for police salary to be increased? Not saying exactly how much this salary is to be increased to. What if they add 3,000 naira to it or 1,000 naira to it at the end of the day? Increased. They have increased, have increased. Yeah. Why are we not talking about the cost of governance? Imagine in the open right now, they are saying our legislators earn the highest in the world today. You and I know very much. We're not even talking about the ministers here, the presidency, all of that, the people in NNPC, all that kind of stuff. We know too well that our government, our system just can't bear this. This is just too much for us. Why are we not, why are in the legislators? I know you're not one, but why are they not just making this concession just yet? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Well, you know, it's very difficult for us to understand how governance work, and it's partly our fault. We haven't engaged in politics. A typical... Nigerian, me included, really I don't even know what the salaries are. I don't know. I haven't immersed myself in that world because I figure that, like most Nigerians, they're going to do what they need to do and we assume the country is working properly. But the frailties of this administration have, and every administration comes out in the worst of times. COVID exposed things. Um, brutality to its citizenry, which is the first thing you're supposed to protect. Um, has been exposed. Um, but 
please let's not let's not belittle what's going on in the whole country. And yes, I, and as I said, my heart goes out to those who have lost their lives from this whole issue. But this is Nigeria. This is not a southern NSARS thing. The North isn't complaining about NSARS. Thousands upon thousands of Nigerians have been killed, kidnapped, and made homeless in the north of Nigeria due to insecurity. But not police officers. But not police officers. So they're not looking at that way. That's banditry, that's insurgency. They have their own they issues. They have their own issues. And the country didn't come to their aid. There were some noises and everything died down. It's too far away. And we're seeing that people are complaining in the South that the North is not involved. The North is saying, we don't have your issues. But if we had dialogue, if, com if the whole country was coming together and movements, movements, not political movements, but social movements were made so that we can discuss these issues and put the feet of government to fire, we would be able to get some results. And I think that is what is going to establish itself going forward in Nigeria today. Listen, I I'm, I'm not... Um, by any means saying that I have a panacea, these are my opinions. And my opinion is that this, in the rebirth of Nigeria, we don't want a revolution. That's the violent part. We want an evolution, which is the sensible part. We need to think smartly. We don't need to fight in the streets. We don't burn our own home. Why burn your own home? Who's going to fix it for you? The government that doesn't do anything, you want it to go back and fix the roads and the infrastructure that you're burning, it's not going to happen. Well, I think you just take that from, from me. That I was going to ask you, now, the revolution, the protest, had festered probably too long, and other elements are beginning to infiltrate. Yes. And now, tell me, how do I differentiate between the genuine protesters from hoodlums, miscreants? What name do I call? How do I... Do? What's the difference here? As I said, you know, earlier I was talking about what happened with Black Lives Matter. When it started, there was, there was a noble cause, and black lives do matter. And yes, in case we, we know every life matters, but the, the push was that enough violence against black people, and everybody joined in. And then political elements got involved, and in, in, uh, in, uh, they, they, this uh, Antifa, the American far left, got in, and there was looting and rioting, and people were getting shot. And, We've seen this movie before. It's playing out in the Nollywood version, unfortunately. Nigeria is seeing it now. What we should also be looking at is what happens after this. We've made a noise and we've shook government. America, uh, the Americans did the same thing. But what they did was they decided, you know what, we're going to vote. For the first time in American history, 30 million people have voted early. Never happened in the history of a country over 300 years old. What we as Nigerians need to understand is that we need good governance. You're not going to change this thing overnight. We need to understand that there is a movement coming. And it, we, we are a democracy. So asking for Buhari to leave is, is just dumb. It's not, it's not going to happen. He was elected into office, and he must do his term. And we must assist him in getting a better Nigeria by demonstrating, by protesting, but not by being violent. What we want to do is get ourselves ready post this era. And what I'm advocating for is that violence-free world where we are smart, we're thinking smart, we're preparing, we're getting our, our PVCs, we're getting our voters registration cards, we're deciding who our leaders are going to be, we're, we're looking at what Nigeria needs to be post-2023, we're looking at the political parties, we know it doesn't work for us. We need our own Nigerian democracy. And we need to know what governance looks like, what infrastructure looks like, what the standard of living looks like. And we need to have that conversation. We don't need government as a people to have a conversation. We must have the conversation amongst ourselves. But my first, northern brother, my southern brother, my eastern brother, my brother from the center part of Nigeria must be able to sit down and have this conversation. But first, we need to be very, very organized. But you, you, you hinted at something that uh, caught me there. A lot has been exposed courtesy of um, COVID-19 and, yes. of course, the protestation right now, yes. the NSAS protests. You heard about what's going on in Lagos, how they invaded the palace of the Oba, and you heard the palaces piled somewhere that has been discovered and the citizens have decided to distribute it to themselves. A lot of, uh, I don't want to mention names of people, but people are being fingered here and there as to trying to, to protect their interests at all costs 
and as a result, more and more people are dying. So, do you think this is a good, so, so some good part of this uh, revolution? I Again, I, I refuse to use that term because I'm afraid that it connotates the violence that we're trying to avoid. We need to be smart. We're a young country with an amazing population of very smart people, and we're social media smart. We're putting the, f the feet of government to fire because we've got the devices to be able to show palliatives were not delivered. It's not that the president didn't do what he was supposed to do. His job is to find the right people and delegate that power deliver the palliatives to the people. As far as he's concerned, he's done the job. If those things have been hoarded and kept for nefarious reasons and they've been found out, then the president needs to realize who is responsible for that. Unfortunately, this issue has made it bare. Palliatives and the fact that they were not given out during, since May, they were not given out. That's, a, that's criminal. That is genocidal as far as I'm concerned. People died because of this issue. People didn't work. There was no food. And of course, the people are angry. What do you want them to do? This is, this is not just Lagos. This is probably in every area where these palliatives were supposed to be given out. Why were they not distributed? People were handed money. Why were they handed money? Food. Government did what it's supposed to do at one level. And we cannot say we're going to brain, blame everything on President Buhari because it's not there. Everybody gets the blame because there was no oversight. Did anybody check? Were there checks and balances in play? These are things we need to change in the next evolution of who Nigeria is. We need to do the right thing and have people accountable for what they don't do. Malik, you, uh, you, 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 you've been part of what's been going on here. You've been advocating for a whole lot of stores for some time by yourself. Things are not run the way they actually should be. I've heard you allude to the fact that these same guys have been here like forever. We're watching them when we were kids, we're watching them now, we're even getting older, and they're still on top of sitting on top of us. Is it like, what's going on? Are we going to remain this way forever? No, seriously, tell me. My biggest problem is that <clears throat> those that want to lead yeah. have not been given the window, so we must take it. And it has to be nonviolent. It needs to be in a democratic way at the ballot box, but we must be ready. We must prepare ourselves for what's coming. This, look, if you're complaining right now, did you vote in 2019 or not? No, and if you didn't, okay. that answer is get ready to vote because you cannot overthrow a democratically elected government through these means. There's we a, must do it the right way. There's a problem. These old folks have got money, a lot of money, and they can get just anyone to work for them. Anyone. Even the newborn baby today will work for them. They've got a lot of money. Yes. What are we going to do? We have a lot of money, but guess what? This movement has shown that it doesn't matter how much money you have. People came to the streets. Your money does nothing. If the people want to come out and protest, we'll be tied any government that goes against it. This is a democracy. This is Nigeria. Okay, as we grant towards the heart now, um, would you say government has responded appropriately to this challenge? You know, I try my best to put myself in a position of whoever is at the helm of affairs, and it's impossible to do that. I can't tell you what has been done and what has not been done, but from my own point of view, and I always like to stress that because we all have opinions. Look, this is a huge country, and I don't think people have a complete understanding of what it takes to keep a country of 200 odd million people together. We're bigger than some, some you know, unions. Even the European Union is just a little bit bigger than what Nigeria is. We're not, I mean, we, you know, we, we, we've looked at guys who, and I call them guys because when they were in their 30s, they ran this country, uh, President Buhari, Obasanjo, Babangida. Sometimes even 20s. And they're still here. Is there no one to lead this country? Are we, the, are we only going to look at these political elites? Where are the leaders? Where are people? And why won't they give that opportunity to people that have studied, have uh, exposure, have the right kind of thinking? Why must it be that we rely on this political elite? And some of them still want to come back in their late 70s. This evolution has to be that we're trying to take back 
our country, and we're trying to design the architecture of Nigeria going forward post-2023. If we're going to complain, and we showed, and what this NSARS and everything that's going on has done, is to show that the people can rise. Nigerians are strong, they're strong-willed, and they'll sacrifice. They've, they've, we've awoken something that people assumed would never happen in Nigeria. We're too afraid to go and put ourselves in the firing line. Okay, Malik, finally now, if you were going to represent the protesters, are you going to put just two or three demands to government? And then your appeal to, to the protesters, what would it be, very briefly? To be very honest, that question is a question that cannot be answered because I would feel that I, as a Nigerian, want to see every Nigerian have its voice. The noise that's being made right now is being made because where Lagos has um, sort of taken the fire of this, and, and we, we're proud of the fact that it's done that, but Lagos is not Nigeria. And if NSARS and all the movement and the brutality of what's going on right now with the police issue is what we're all sh screaming and shouting about, then let's not forget our brothers in the North. That conversation must be brought together and then that demand brought to government because we need, and this is all part of security. <laughs> Malik, well, I think that's a very good point to leave it. I think you said it all and so succinctly, I must say. Thank you. Well, I've been talking to Malik Ado Ibrahim, CEO of Next Television, Next TV, I'm sure he prefers. Same time next week, promises even more. Until then, please remember to remain on the road to violence free Nigeria. No more to violence.